Today, I'm going to show you how to use the Refine Edge tool in Photoshop. Hey guys and welcome to Flurn. My name is Aaron Nace and you can find me on Flurn.com where we make learning Photoshop and photography fun. And today's episode is going to be super helpful because we're using the Refine Edge tool which is totally necessary anytime you want to cut something out of the background that isn't very simple. So when you have a complicated selection like hair or clouds or clothing, anything that has a little bit of a jagged edge that's not smooth, the Refine Edge tool is going to be your best friend. We're going to show you how to make a standard selection using the magic wand tool. Then we're going to go into the refine edge dialog and go over all the settings that are going to help you get the most out of your selection. We're even going to show you edge detection, which is going to be your best friend when it comes to cutting out things like hair. We're going to output this on a layer mask and then to finish it off, we're going to put some text on the background and show you how great of a selection we can make with the refine edge tool. So here's our image for today. We've got a majestic lion looking at God knows what, standing on a clean background, and we want to cut him out of the background. Now let's take a look at why we need the Refine Edge. We're going to zoom in and take a look. Here we're going to see all these little areas where we actually have, you know, hair that needs to be cut out relatively precisely, and that's where the Refine Edge tool really comes in handy. So let's go ahead and start off by making a selection around our background. Let's say we want to get rid of this guy and replace it with just a, a, a white or a colored background. We're going to go ahead and grab our Magic Wand tool, and I'm going to click on my sky, we're going to hold down the shift key and we're going to make a few more clicks, which is going to select more and more areas. Everywhere I click, it's going to select an, select an area that's similar. So you can see that's relatively easy to make a selection around our subject. Basically just shift click in a couple of different areas. Now, if I were to go ahead and cut the lion out of the background, let's go ahead and give it a shot. I'm going to click on my magic wand, or sorry, on my layer mask tool right here. There we go. That's going to give us the inverse of what we want. So at this point, I'm going to click on my layer mask and I'm going to hit Control or Command I. That's going to invert the layer mask. Okay, now let's just zoom in and see what kind of selection we have. It's not really that great. And if we were to create a new layer under this, let's just create a new layer. We're going to go to a solid color fill layer. In this case, let's just try filling it with white and we're going to put it right underneath our line. There we go. This is about what we can expect whenever we use a standard selection tool like the magic wand tool in Photoshop. This is about as good of an edge as we're going to get. And that's a problem because it doesn't really look that good. So introducing the refine edge tool. So what we're going to do, I'm going to click right here on our layer mask. Now, if you have a selection already active, I'm just going to undo this a few times. Let's just hit undo a few times. So we have this selection already active. Now, in my selection tool, so I've still got my magic wand tool selected here, we've got this refine edge button right up here at the top. So we have our selection, we can click on refine edge. Or if you don't see a refine edge button, you just go to select and then down here you can go to refine edge. It's the same thing. Okay, now we've got our refine edge. Let's take a look at this dialog and see what we've got. At the very top of the Refine Edge tool, we have a couple options for view. Now, we have options like Marching Ants, which is basically going to be the standard view. We have things like Overlay and on black and on white. There we go. A lot of different options, black and white and things like this. Now, these are not actually changing the selection at all. This is just changing how the selection looks in order to help you make a better selection. Okay. So next we have, we're going to skip edge detection for right now. We're going to come back to it in just a second. Now let's, let's talk about our adjust edge. And this is probably where you've spent a little bit of time if you've been in the refine edge dialog before. So smooth, this is basically going to kind of smooth out the selection. In my opinion, this is, it's not really that helpful of a, of a uh, slider here because it, it doesn't tend to make selections look any better. It will just kind of like smooth them out. But you know, for the most part, um, that, that's not really what we want. Feathering is just going to soften up the edge a little bit. Let's change our view so we can see maybe overlay. So we can see what the edge looks like, but still see the lion as well. Okay. Now, the more I feather this out, this is going to actually just be, it's going to make the edge a little bit more fuzzy. It's like softening it up. Okay. So sometimes you are going to need to soften up your edges. If they are a little bit too hard to start with, you can soften them up. And sometimes it's going to make the edge look a little bit more real a little bit more photorealistic because photos ne don't necessarily have like super crisp edges all the time. So feathering is actually very, very helpful. Okay. 
Next we have contrast. So let's say I brought my feathering all the way up there. And now I'm deciding to bring my contrast up. That's going to go ahead and firm up that line on the outside. So if I am going to, if I need to smooth something out, generally I won't actually use a smooth uh, dialog. I'll generally add some feathering and then add some contrast. It tends to do a little bit better of a job. So contrast is just going to define how, uh, basically how hard the edge around your selection is going to be. So if everything's default and I bring the contrast up, it's not really going to do anything because the edge is already um, <laughs> quite contrasty. Okay, now we have an option to shift our edge in or out. And this is basically not going to do much if I don't select any of these tools, but let's say we do select some feathering. There we go. And now I can push my edge in or out. And this is going to pull it either away from my line or towards my line. And this is also very, very helpful because oftentimes you're going to make a selection around a subject and it's going to include like a little white halo all the way around your subject. That's like basically the edge. So if you pull that edge in towards your subject, usually it helps you define that edge a lot better. And when you go to cut your subject out from the background, you don't have like a white line all the way around them or whatever color is your background. So the shift edge is also very important. Okay, so let's just go ahead and we're gonna put this back to zero. Let's put this guy back to zero as well. Now here at the bottom, we have an option for decontaminate colors. I usually leave that unchecked. Doesn't tend to do a whole lot, but if you do have some other like colors there in your background, that can help out. And here we have an option of where we would like to output our actual selection. So we can use a output to a new layer. We can go a new layer with a layer mask, a new document, a new document with a layer mask, or we can do a selection or a layer mask. Now those two are grayed out right now only because I'm working on a background layer and Photoshop doesn't like to add layer masks to background layers. So let's just hit cancel real quick. We're gonna turn this layer into a regular layer just by holding Alt or Option and double clicking on it. There we go, it's a, it's a regular layer now. So let's go back to our Refine Edge document and we can see now we can now put it to a selection or a layer mask. So we're gonna choose layer mask here. Okay, now I'm gonna still leave those all at zero for now, and we're gonna come back to our edge detection because this is where we're really gonna spend some time and this is gonna be the best tool when it comes to cutting out hair and fur. So here in the edge detection, we have a couple different options. Starting off with our tool, let's click and hold there. We can see we have a refine radius tool and erase refinements tool. So we're gonna start with our refine radius tool. This will just erase what this does. Okay, next we have edge detection, smart radius, and we can choose our own radius. In my opinion, smart radius works really well I just tend to leave that checked. So to actually use the edge detection tool, what we're gonna do is start, basically I'm going away from this dialog and I'm gonna paint right here on the outside of wherever my fur is or the area that I'd actually like to be refined. There we go. And basically I just paint right there and Photoshop does a really great job of figuring out what's hair and what's background and refining my selection for me. There we go, we're gonna to continue to paint in there. And as I paint right around my subject, you can see it actually does a really good job continuing to further and further refine the edge. Now, if you don't want smart radius checked, you can uncheck that and then you can choose your own radius here. You can go larger or smaller. There we go. In this case, I think a little bit larger works pretty well. Okay, you can even use a larger brush here if you'd like and start painting in to cover more area at a time. There we go, and it's gonna start automatically going around the rest of our subject too, trying to find, there we go, trying to find those areas that need a little bit nicer of a selection. All right, let's cover the back, and back up there, looks like it needed a little bit. All right, there we go. That needed it too. Okay, that is really, really cool. Let's see the original. So I'm gonna hit show original. That's what we get without the refine edge tool, and here is what we get with the Refine Edge tool and using the Refine Radius tool. Okay, so that looks great. Now I can see what that selection looks like on black. I can see what it looks like on white. A couple different options. I have options for on the layers and a reveal layer as well, which just shows me everything. So let's go ahead and put it right here to overlay, just like we had it before. That looks great, and I'm gonna output this selection now to a layer mask, which is perfect. So we're gonna go layer mask and hit okay. Okay, so we have a layer mask. Remember, we did select the sky, so we need to invert the layer mask. So we're gonna click on our layer mask. 
I'm going to hit Command I, and there we have our lion is cut out from the background and all the hairs are cut out with him. Now that we've cut our lion out, let's go ahead and see what we can do with our background. We're going to create an adjustment layer here. I'm going to go to solid color and then we can choose really any, let's start, go ahead and start with white. We're going to put this right underneath our line and we can see what a nice edge we have there. We don't have a whole lot of blue all around our subject. Now it's not completely perfect, but it's pretty dang good. This looks great. Okay. If I change the colors here, we can just click on our color fill layer. There we go. And we can see here on different colors, it should look good as well. Now you are going to see a little bit of fringing. That's because our lion was basically photographed on a very light colored background. And this is very, very difficult to get rid of. So my suggestion is if you have the lion originally photographed on a light colored background, make sure what you're replacing with is also light, like a nice light red. There we go. Light pink, something like that. There we go. That's going to look good. A light green will look good. A light blue will look good. Things like that. Going from a light colored background to something like black, you're going to see an outline like that. And if you don't mind it, not a huge deal. But in this case, we're going to choose white because I am pretty dang sure it's going to look good. There we go. Let's hit OK. Cool. So we have our lion and he's on a white background. You could choose to have this be on a transparent background if you'd like to do that as well. But we're going to use white for this. Okay, now let's go ahead and bring in a little bit of text and show you some other cool things we can do after having made that great selection. So before this episode, I went ahead and made this little like plaque. It just says lion and then some dummy text right under it. We're going to use our move tool. So I'm going to hit shift and click and drag from one document to the other. There we go. And we can see, we'll just put it right in front of our lion and bring it full screen again. So this is basically just some text with a, with a semi-transparent background in the back. So in this case, you know, if we wanted to place this over top of the lion, you could definitely do that. But because we've already selected out our lion and we have him on his, basically his own layer, what we can do is bring this line text below the lion. So we're going to just hold down the controller command and open bracket, which brings it below the lion. And now we're free to place it underneath our lion. And we can see still, even there, if I were to bring the fur right over that I look at that, that you can see the actual fur directly over top of it. So you can get like a little bit, um, you can get a little bit fancy with this. It's just going to make it look a little bit uh, higher end in my opinion, if you do have like nice accurate selections around fur and things like that. So instead of just placing it directly over top of the line, now it looks like the lion is coming over top of the sign and uh, makes it look a little bit cooler. So let's go ahead and crop this in just a little bit. There we go. And this would make a really cool, simple like ad or poster or press kit, something that you wanted to have an image, maybe some text behind it, or you wanted to completely replace the background altogether. I think it's a really nice, simple image, great effect. And I love how you can see the fur coming in over top of this little sign there. Very cool. Let's go ahead and look at our before and after. Here's our before with our lion on a plain sky background. And here's our after with the lion on a white background with a really cool sign telling you a little bit about Mr. Lion and how his day went. And that's it for today's tutorial, guys. I hope you enjoyed learning how to cut out your subject using the Refine Edge tool. Remember we started off using a magic wand tool and just getting a big general selection. Then we went into the Refine Edge and talked about the different settings when it came to like smoothing and shifting the edge back and forth. Then we showed you how to use the Edge Detection tool, talking about the radius and actually painting on on the outside of your subject. Then we made that into a selection and then place that selection onto a layer mask, which put our lion on his own layer. Then we put a white layer underneath him and some text, and then we're done. We've got a really cool graphic and a great way to select out edges. If you love Photoshop and photography like I do, and you want to learn more from Flurn.com, just click that subscribe button on your screen. We send free Photoshop and photography videos every single week. And if you have an idea for a new episode or a question or a comment about today's episode, leave it in a comment right down below. We'd love to hear from you and we'll do our best to answer your questions. Thanks again, guys. We'll flirt you later. Bye everyone. So here's our image for today. We have a majestic lion and blah. So here's our image for today. We have a beautiful man lion going. <laughs> I don't know. That's a man or a lady. La, 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 la. All right, cool. And this would make a really, and this would make a really simple. Whew. Is blah. All right. <laughs> and this would make a really nice poster for a zoo. <laughs> for all those people who work in zoos out there and watch Photoshop tutorials. <laughs> oh man.